and we use uh, Prime Trade Select to select our option purchases. And there's three steps involved with Prime Trade Select. We determine the price trend of the stock first using a 50 and 100 day exponential moving average system. Uh, step two is we select a low risk entry point using the Keltner channels. And step three is we use what we call the 1% rule for selecting an option uh, strike price. So step one is to determine the price trend of a stock, and we use the 50 and 100-day exponential moving averages. And if the 50-day EMA of a stock is above its 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a buy signal. If the 50-day EMA is below the 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a sell signal. And uh, trend following uh, works in both bull and bear markets. And in the last two bear markets, we purchased put options and bearish ETFs on stocks that were on an EMA sell signal. So here's an example of an EMA buy signal. The uh, red and black line right here is the daily price movement for Boeing stock. And the blue line right here is the 50-day EMA. The red line is the 100-day EMA. So we can see that the 50-day EMA is above the 100-day the EMA, so Boeing is on a buy signal. And as long as that 50-day EMA remains above the 100-day EMA, then the stock remains on a buy signal. And step two is we want to select a low-risk entry point using the Keltner channels, and the Keltner channels are an overbought, oversold indicator. And there's uh, three channels. There's the upper channel, this blue line right here. The middle channel is the dotted line, and the lower channel is this blue, this lower blue line right here. So there's three channels, and we use this uh, as an overbought, oversold indicator that helps us time our entry. So when a stock is trading up near the upper channel or above the upper channel, well, the stock's getting overbought, and when it gets down to the middle channel or lower channel, then the stock is getting oversold. So we can see with Home Depot, it got overbought, uh, retraced, uh, got oversold, rallied, uh, got near the upper channel, was uh, overbought, sold off. Um, after the sell-off, you could have bought anywhere in here, and the, the uh, stock rallied after being oversold, became overbought, sold off, became oversold, uh, rallied. So you can see that Home Depot in, in this example is following these Keltner channels, and you can time your entries with the um, using these Keltner channels. So when a stock is trading near the upper channel, it's overbought and normally retraces lower. And when it's trading near the lower channel, it's oversold and it usually rallies. So the uh, idea here is not to buy a stock or an option or a call option when the stock is overbought and it's trading near the uh, upper or upper channel or above the upper channel. So we use this to time our entries and we wait till the stock drops towards the middle or lower uh, Keltner channel before we enter. Um, so I'm going to just show some trade examples here, um, and these transact our brokerage transaction reports show options that we purchased uh, using the Keltner channels to select a low risk entry point. And what I did is uh, on the price chart I circled the date that we uh, entered the trade, so you can see um, what happened after we entered the trade, and you, you'll notice that. The stocks rallied uh, after our call purchase, uh, producing profitable trades. So uh, these are examples of how the Keltner channels help us uh, select a low-risk entry point. Uh, the first one is for the leveraged uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, the UDAO, and we can see uh, a very strong price uptrend from uh, the lower left corner to the upper right channel or upper right corner. And the question is, if you wanted to participate in this big move, where do you, you jump in? So 
uh, we use the Keltner channels to time our entry. You can see um, the UDAO dipped right here, hit the middle channel, and uh, we bought the uh, 55 strike call right in here. Um, and then you can see uh, after our entry, uh, UDAO rallied, so we got a low risk entry uh, using the Keltner channels, and we waited till they uh, dropped to that middle channel there uh, before we entered the trade. Here's another example. This is for uh, Boeing. Uh, we still own Boeing. It's It's been um, a good stock for us and a good option to own. And you can see, again, another strong price uptrend. The question is, where do you want to jump in? Uh, so we waited till the um, price hit the middle channel, and then we bought the uh, Boeing 180 calls right in here uh, when it hit the middle channel. So here's just a few more examples. This is for the utilities. ETF uh, waited till it retraced and then bought the 42 strike call right here at 630. This is uh, Starbucks, uh, strong price uptrend, waited till it hit the middle channel, and then we bought the 40 strike call at 1375. Uh, here's another example. This is for Amazon. This is another one we still own, and we waited till. Um, the price dropped to the middle channel, and then we bought the uh, 330 strike call at 113 right in here. Of course, Amazon's trading now at around 1500, so uh, we've been riding this one for a while. Uh, so these are examples of um, using the Keltner channels to time our entries. And if you notice, the uh, Keltner channels allowed us to get low risk entries as the stocks didn't retrace much from our. Um, entry point. So it helps uh, prevent getting stopped out of your position and results in higher accuracy um, option trading. And you can easily download these Keltner channels from stockcharts.com or any other number of financial websites. And we just use the uh, default parameters, the 20, 2.0, and 10 uh, for the Keltner channel. So a very useful tool for timing our entries. And then the third step in prime trade select is we use what we call the 1% rule to select an option strike price with a high probability of success. So once you select a stock that you're going to purchase a call option, uh, there's hundreds or even thousands of strike prices to choose from. So selecting a strike price is just as important as the trade selection itself. And option premiums, consists of time value and intrinsic value, and options lose all time value at expiration. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. So you always want to keep that in mind. Um, due to the time decay characteristics of options, when you buy an option, we want to minimize the time value because that's going to decay to zero at expiration, and we want to maximize our intrinsic value. <clears throat> So we, we devised a very simple rule for um, selecting a strike price that allows us to minimize the time value and maximize the intrinsic value. And what we do is we limit the time value portion of an option to less than 1% of the stock price. So if you, if you follow that rule, then the stock only has to go up 1% and you're going to start profiting uh, on your option. So uh, if you purchase an option on a stock that's trading at 100, you want to limit the time value portion um, of that option to one point or less. So that would be 1% of the stock price. So $100 stock, limit the time value to one point or less. <clears throat> and again, if you limit the time value to 1%, the stock only has to go up. 1% and you're going to start profiting uh, on your option. So this this will give you a much higher probability of success than an option strike that requires uh, uh, say a 6 to 6 to 10% increase in the underlying stock just to break even. So a lot of times you're not going to get that 6 to 10% increase and if you don't um, you're you're faced with a 100% loss on your option premium. So we always follow this rule, and it gives us a much higher probability of success with option purchases.
<clears throat> Here's an example. Uh, this is for Starbucks. We bought the 40 strike call at 1375. And at the time, Starbucks was trading at 5363. Um, this was an in the money call because the 40 strike price was less than the uh, price of the stock trading at the time. So here's a, a quick way to manually calculate the um, time value and intrinsic value of an option. If the stock is trading at 5363, if you subtract the uh, strike price of the call, in this example, 40, you have an intrinsic value of 1363. So with stock trading at 5363, strike price of 40, intrinsic value is 1363. So if you take the total option premium, in this case, we paid 1375 and subtract that intrinsic value, you come up with a time value of 12 cents in this example. So if uh, Starbucks goes up 12 cents, then we break even and start profiting on the trade. Um, and uh, you can see that even though we deleverage by buying these in the money uh, call options, you still get a good return if the stock is up 10 or 20 percent. Um, you can see that if the stock is up 10 percent at expiration, uh, this trade would, would, would produce a 38 percent return. And if it's up 20 percent, it would produce a 77 percent return. So this is a call option purchase calculator. And we have a series of calculators we developed over the years that allow you to um, know the uh, profit loss potential for an option trade before you take the trade. So before we take any trades, we always use our option calculator. So with Starbucks trading at 59, this would be, this option would have a 38% return. Um, so even though we're buying an in the money call, which are more expensive, you still get a good return if the uh, stock goes up. So. We, it's, it's kind of a trade-off, you know, if you trade at the money options, you can get a higher percent return, but you, you can also lose 100% of the premium if the stock is flat or down at expiration. So you can see with an in-the-money call, if the stock was flat at expiration at 53.63, we'd only lose about 1% on this trade. And if it's down 5%, we lose 20%. So an at the money or out of the money call, if the stock is flat at option expiration, you lose 100%. So we like to use this trade off of trading in the money options uh, that give us a higher probability of success. <clears throat> so in this example, Starbucks stock only has to go up uh, 12 cents or, or two tenths of 1% for this trade to break even and start uh, profiting. <clears throat> so. A lot of uh, out of the money call purchases require the stock to go up 10 or 15, even 15 percent to break even. And a lot of times you're not going to get that expected move uh, during the uh, time that that option is in, in place before expiration. So if you have a one or two month option uh, till expiration, you may not get that 10 to 15 percent move that you're expecting, and in that case, you'd, you'd incur a 100% uh, loss. <clears throat>